In this video, I will show you how to track conversions with Twitter Pixel. This will help you measure which campaigns perform better. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you're new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GTM, consider subscribing. When it comes to paid advertising, it is crucial to track the success of your campaigns. And that can be done with a thing called conversion tracking. Conversion is an interaction that is important for your business. For example, a purchase, a sign up, or something else. So if you are sending paid traffic to your website, you must know which ads are more effective and drive more conversions. So let's take a look how we can you track conversions with Twitter Pixel and Google Tag Manager. In this video, I presume that you have already configured your Twitter ads account. If you haven't done that yet, then go to ads.twitter.com and complete all the steps that the interface will ask you to do. And when you're ready, go to ads.twitter.com, click on tools, and then conversion tracking. If you are just starting for the first time, you will not see a table like this because these are the events that are already being tracked. And you will see that here, it will be displayed as unverified. The unverified status shows that universal website tag, or also known as Twitter pixel, is not installed on your website. And if you want to do that, you should then click this link right here that says view code and installation instructions. And here you will get the code that you should add to all the pages of your website. Since we are going to use Google Tag Manager, we need only one part of this code, and that is this. This is the Twitter pixel ID that we will use in GTM. So mark it, copy it without any quotation marks, and then let's go to Google Tag Manager. Here I am in a clean GTM container. I am in tags section, and here let's click new because we are going to create a new Google Tag Manager tag. Then click on the tag configuration, and then in the search field, enter Twitter. And here is the tag template that we are going to use. Click it. Here we have to paste the Twitter pixel ID. In fact, later in this video, we're going to create one more tag that will be using the same Twitter pixel ID. So if you don't want to every time manually copy paste the Twitter pixel ID, I would recommend creating a constant variable that we will set once and then we will later just reuse it. So instead of pasting the ID, click this button and then click the plus icon right here. Now let's create a new variable. So click anywhere right here and then choose constant. Here, let's paste the pixel ID and then let's name this variable. Click save. Then let's keep the page view as the tag event. And then in the triggering section, click anywhere and select all pages. So this configuration will fire the Twitter pixel on all pages. However, keep in mind that in this video, I am not taking into account things like privacy regulations. And in real life situations, you would actually need to fire this tag only if the visitor gives consent for tracking. But this topic is for another lesson. And if you want to learn more about how to make your Google Tag Manager setup compliant with privacy regulations, then take a look at my Google Tag Manager course for beginners, where I have a dedicated module just for privacy regulations and things like GDPR and Google Tag Manager. I will post the link to the course below the video. Anyway, let's go back to the setup and let's name this tag. Hit save. Now let's test whether this is working properly. So in Google Tag Manager, click the preview button right here in the top right corner. Then a new tab will open and it will ask you to enter the URL of the website where you want to test that pixel. Now I will paste the URL, click connect, and then in a new tab or a new window, the website will appear. For me personally, it is more convenient to have the website opened in the new tab. And you can achieve that by installing an extension called Tag Assistant Companion. I will post a link to that extension below the video. Anyway, so here is my demo website. The preview mode is connected. And here I see that my Twitter page view tag has fired. But even though the tag has fired, it does not necessarily mean that the request and the data was properly sent to Twitter. So there's another way how you can test that. And there's an extension for Chrome, which is called Twitter Pixel Helper. I will post a link to it below the video as well. So once you install the extension, it will appear right here. And if you want to make it visible always right here, you can click this pin icon. Now, once you do that, let's go to the website where you're testing the Twitter Pixel and let's refresh the page once again. And here you will see that there is a number right now next to the Twitter icon. So click it. And you will see that the Twitter website tag was fired successfully. You can click it and you can see this link, which is advanced debug info. So you should click this little triangle to get more information, like what was the URL of the page? What is the tag ID? And if you send some additional information, and I will show you some things later in this video. So then you will see them right here as well. So once you install the page view tag of the Twitter pixel, you can go back to Google Tag Manager and launch this change and make it live for all your visitors. So click submit. 
and then name it something like Twitter Pixel installed. This will create a new version of the container. And if at any point in the future you want to know like when was the Twitter Pixel added to your container, you will be able to do that easily by going to versions. And here you will see the Twitter Pixel installed version right here. Now let's go back to the Twitter ads interface. And here you should click return to conversion tracking. Even though I have just installed Twitter Pixel and I tested that it works fine. If you are new with this conversion tracking for Twitter, you will still see the unverified status right here. So don't worry about that. It takes more time for this data to be processed. So I would say the next day it should work fine. And if the next day you're still seeing unverified, then maybe you have configured something incorrectly. And just by having this basic setup, you will already be able to benefit from it. So for example, if you want to build a remarketing audience to which later you will be showing certain ads, you can create that by going to tools, audiences, and then you can click create audience. Then you select website activity, next. And here you can enter things like audience name, description, and then you can include people who have visited certain pages of your website. So for example, you want to create an audience of people who have visited a certain category of products of your website. So then you could select visitors to a specific web page and you can enter a condition where website URL contains, let's say, shoes. And then you will need to agree to policies and then create audience. Also with that very same basic setup, you can already track certain conversions if they are based on page visits. So if for example, someone signs up to a webinar and that visitor is later redirected to a thank you page, you can then go to conversion tracking, click create new conversion event. And here you can enter, for example, sign up or something like that. And then you can enter webinar sign up. And here you can include not all website visits, but only those where the URL contains, let's say webinar, thank you. Obviously, if this is the actual part of the URL of the thank you page, if your thank you pages URL contains some other text, then you should definitely insert that value here. And then finally, you have to agree to terms of service and create this conversion event. You don't have to install anything additionally, because the pixel ID is the same, the event is the same. So basically what will happen is that just by sending regular page view data to Twitter pixel, you will be able to have certain conversion events in your Twitter ads reports. But some interactions are usually more complex and they are not based just on a page view. Maybe they are related to certain events or maybe you want to send some additional data to Twitter pixel. For example, how about purchases? For example, here I have a demo page where I can buy this watch and I can do that just by clicking this purchase button right here. And here I am on a thank you page. Now what have I done before taking this video is let's say that I have asked a developer to add some additional data about this purchase to the data layer. Now, if you have no idea what data layer is in Google Tag Manager, I have another tutorial and I will post the link to that tutorial below the video. So make sure that you definitely watch that tutorial first before taking a look into this next part of the video. So while I am on this thank you page and I have enabled my preview and debug mode here on the tag assistant, or which is also known as the preview mode here, I can see an event which is called purchase. So this is what a developer added to the data layer. So if I click it and then expand this row right here, you will notice that I have things like what were the products that were purchased or what is the currency of the purchase or what is the value? Well, I could actually send some of this information to Twitter pixel and then enrich my reports in Twitter ads. So let's say that in this example, I will be using currency and value. If you want to use this information in Google Tag Manager, you will have to create variables and they are called data layer variables. Since we are interested in two values, one is here, the other one is here, we will have to create two data layer variables. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, then new verbal configuration and then data layer variable. And here we have to enter the name of the parameters or of the keys that are in the data layer. So since we are interested in currency, we should enter its name, but just adding the currency here will not work because in this case, currency is not aligned to the left. So as you can see, we have e-commerce then aligned a bit to the right, we have purchase and then even more aligned to the right, we have this part. So it looks like this is the top level parameter, then its child is this one. And then its child is this one. So if we want to access currency, we have to enter e-commerce dot purchase dot currency. And then let's name this variable. Variable's name can be whatever you want, but in this field, it must be exactly like this. So click save. 
And then let's do the same thing for the value. So it will be e-commerce.purchase.value. So in Google Tag Manager, I will click new, variable configuration, data layer variable, and then we'll enter value. Make sure that there are no typos or uppercase letters or something else that is in the data layer right here. Well, if in your case, the parameter's name contains the uppercase letter, then you must enter that uppercase letter right here because this field, or actually most of the things in Google Tag Manager are case sensitive. And then let's name the variable and save it. So now let's go to tags because we are going to create a new Twitter pixel tag that will send the purchase to Twitter. So let's click new tag configuration and then in the search field, enter Twitter, click it. Then let's enter the Twitter pixel ID that we have already created in the beginning of this video. So I will click this button and we'll select the existing constant variable, which is this one. Then in the event field right here, I should select purchase. And additionally, I can include certain parameters. So for example, I could send things like currency and value. Make sure that value that you are sending to Twitter pixel contains a dot and not comma. So it must be in this exact format. So here let's click add. And first I will select the currency. It is displayed right here. And then I will select that data layer variable that we have just created. I will click this button and then select currency variable right here. Click add. Then let's add another parameter, which is value. So together with this purchase, we will also send the order total, or in other words, how much money did we make from that particular purchase? And here in this field, you can click on the button and then select the value variable. Click add. So this tag will send the purchase with this additional information taken from the data layer when the purchase actually occurs. Now, one more thing is the trigger. When will we fire this tag? And we can do that when the event is purchase. So when a developer adds data to the data layer and the value of the event key is purchased, this is our moment when we can fire a tag. And we can do that by creating a custom event trigger. So in triggering section, click anywhere and then click plus icon. Here, let's click again anywhere and then select the custom event trigger. Here we have to enter the exact value that is right here, purchase. And then let's name this trigger. Click save. The final thing is to name this tag. Click save. Now let's test whether this is working properly. So I will click the preview button to refresh the preview mode. Here I am on the product page. The purchase hasn't happened yet. So if I go to the preview mode, you will see that here the page tag has fired because it fires on all pages, but the purchase tag did not fire. Now I will make a purchase. And here you will see that on the second page, two tags fired. The page tag, which again fires on all pages. So the thank you page is no exception, but also we have the purchase tag right here. It fired because the purchase event occurred in the data layer. And if I go back to the thank you page and click on the Twitter pixel helper, you will see that there were two tags fired. The first one is related to the purchase and you can click it right here and see that this is the purchase information that we sent. And if you click on another one, you will see that there is a page view. If you want to see that purchase revenue information in your ad reports, you can go to the homepage of Twitter ads and here you will see the report, but by default, there is nothing related to the revenue. So if you want to add an additional column that will show you how much money you did a certain campaign earn, you can click on the metrics summary dropdown. Or if in the future, the interface changes, you should keep looking for something that says customize metrics. So click this and then enter sale. And here you can keep looking for purchases, sale amount, click it and click apply. And now you have a new column which says purchases sale amount. So if this campaign was live and if it generated certain conversions and revenue, I would see that right here. And that is how you can track conversions with Google Tag Manager and Twitter Pixel. Also, don't forget to use the Twitter Pixel helper to check the data that is sent from your website to Twitter. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.